So in this video, we're going to start our solution of what's called the Buckley-Leverett equation after the first people who wrote it down and came up with a solution. So let's at least write what the equation is. So we have a time derivative of the saturation of one phase. Traditionally, that's the water phase. Then we have a total velocity. And then we have a fractional flow. And here I'm not going to say it's the fractional flow ignoring capillary pressure. We're going to ignore capillary pressure um, from the start. This is then a spatial derivative. Okay, And the fractional flow has an advection and a gravity term but as I said we're going to ignore any diffusive terms due to capillary pressure and that's the only way in which we can solve the equations but it is a reasonable limit for very large scale flows driven by large pressure gradients. So this fractional flow is just the ratio of the mobilities the QT has been taken out and then I have to put it back in here as K lambda 1 Lambda two. And this is the density difference. And this essentially is a function of saturation. It's a very complex function of saturation. We're going to look at that later, but it is just a function of saturation. Now, if we look at, uh, before we go any further, let's have a look at units. We have time here and space. Now, most of the time I like using SI units, and when we have explicit examples, I'm going to always give the numbers in SI units. But as a physicist, there's only one thing better than SI units, and that's dimensionless units. And I'm really pleased to say that the traditional solution of this equation, and this is even in the oil industry, uses dimensionless units. So we're going to introduce those first. So the dimensionless units are as follows. This is your x-axis and imagine I'm injecting something in a well here and I'm producing something so I'm injecting carbon dioxide and maybe water is being produced to relieve pressure or I'm injecting water to displace gas. This is location x equals zero and this where the well is is x equals l. So it's a rather obvious dimensionless distance that we have. A dimensionless distance is just x over l. So the well, right, where I'm producing fluid, is at position one. So that's not exactly a particularly surprising or difficult dimensionless unit. The second one actually has to do with QT. In fact, how saturation will move through the porous medium, if we've got S here, how it moves through the porous medium is really related to how much I've injected. I know we're going to be moving at some characteristic speed, but if I inject twice as much, I think you can see intuitively, we're going to be moving twice as fast. So in fact, we're going to introduce a dimensionless time that, funnily enough, is not really a time scale, but it's a representation of how much I've injected. So my dimensionless time is called poor volumes injected. And what that means is, if TD is 1, I've injected enough of phase 1, enough water, that it could fill the entire pore space. OK? So let's think about what this means. I'm injecting at a rate QT. Now, actually, QT we normally assume is a constant, but it doesn't have to be. So the integral of QT over time, dt, OK, what's that? QT is the volume of fluid injected per unit area, per unit time. Integrate over time, it's the volume injected per unit area. Multiply by a cross-sectional area, and A is always a dummy, don't worry about what's the cross-sectional area, maybe you have to draw, it's going to cancel out immediately. OK, that's a volume. So that's the volume I've injected. If it's the number of pore volumes, it's the volume injected divided by the pore volume of the reservoir. It has a cross-sectional area A, that's out of the board. It has a length L and we're in a porous medium, okay? There's a porous medium here with a porosity. So A's cancel, of course. Okay, so now let's um, look at this. 
Okay, the ds by dx is easy, right? ds1 by dx is ds1 by dx d, dx d by dx. Okay, that shouldn't be uh, too difficult. And x d by dx, and that's just one over l. Okay, so that's the that's the easy one. Okay, then we got a ds by dt. dtd, dtd by dt. Now the key thing here is when I differentiate that with respect to time, I just got the qt, haven't I? Right, so that's the key thing of the integral. qt doesn't have to be a constant in time. It can be variable, but the derivative is just qt and divided by L, L phi. So this is, this becomes, okay, okay. Let's put this in the equation. So we've got phi ds1 by dt. So it's phi, and then we've got this qt over l phi, and then ds1 by dt d. So this is this term put into here. Then we have the qt df1 by ds1, and then we have ds1 by dx, and there's a 1 over L term here. <coughs> okay, so let's have a look at this. And of course, it's all been designed, yeah, it's all been designed, so everything cancels out nicely. So the porosities cancel, the QTs cancel, and the Ls cancel. And so we're left with, in dimensionless form, a much simpler version of the equation. So it's just ds1 by dtd plus df1 by ds1 by dxd. So now this is dimensionless units and we don't need to worry about qts and phi's or anything like that or lengths. We've just got dimensionless numbers here. So now we want to find a solution of this equation. Now I'm going to do another transformation of variables and a transformation of variables that hopefully makes physical sense. As we've described before, this is a time derivative and this is advection, right? It's going with the flow, it's movement. And whereas before, when we had a first derivative here, this was a constant and this was the speed with which we're moving, we've now got a derivative. And a derivative of a saturation dependent term, that's going to be a saturation dependent term. So before getting into the maths too much, because the maths is actually relatively straightforward, actually, we can see here that what we're looking at is a velocity, but a velocity that's going to vary with saturation because it's non-linear. There isn't a fixed velocity with which, which, say, the injected water moves. The speed with which the water front moves through the porous medium will be different for different saturations. And that's sort of obvious when we draw a picture, right? We can see here is moving slower than here. So we're going to look for a solution where s is a function of a dimensionless velocity and vd is just xd over td. The real velocity, by the way, will be qt over phi multiplied by the dimensionless velocity if you want to sort of go through it. So if you're not sort of thinking about it, so qt over phi is your sort of velocity scale basically how fast something that completely fills the pore space will move. And then we have this dimensionless velocity and the saturation will be a function of this dimensionless velocity or the velocity with which a given saturation will move will change. So let's write down the equation again in our dimensionless form. And we're going to look at a solution that's a function of this dimensionless speed. So again, we're going to do the change of variables just like we did in a previous video with the x over root t. This is just x over t, so it should be easier. Um, in fact, it is, but sometimes people sort of think there's something strange going on, um, but there isn't. So let's, uh, let's do the first term. ds1 by dtd can be written as ds by dvd. 
dvd by dtd and that's a constant x okay and if we look at this so it's minus x over td squared yep and just as we did before with with the omega parameter if you recall we're going to write this as minus vd over td okay so we've gone down by vd and there is a minus sign here okay so we got the same for ds1 by d xd is ds1 by dvd dvd by d xd and that's a constant time and that's just going to be 1 over td so we can put put these in the equation here right so we're going to have minus vd over td and 1 over td so this goes here this is going to go here okay so we get minus vd over td ds1 by d vd plus 1 over td equals 0. Okay. And then the TDs cancel out, as they have to. And I'm left with what is actually quite a simple equation. So I'll write it down at the bottom here. We've got ds1 by dvd. And then I'm just going to shuffle things around. I'm going to flip the signs just because it's a little bit more transparent to do this. Okay. So it seems like the equation sort of collapses. And sometimes people find this rather unsatisfying. You know, isn't there a nice transform? Isn't there some fancy function, you know, like the error function? No, it's really as simple as this. Either ds1 by dvd is zero, which is basically s1 is constant. So a solution, and we're going to show perfectly adequate solution, is a constant saturation. So if we have a constant saturation, okay, and things are flowing, that's fine. Okay, and that's sort of... Um, so it seems like a trivial solution. The other one is that the speed with which a given saturation moves is, well, it shouldn't come as a surprise before when this was a constant, this was the speed. In fact, it sort of just asserted it was the speed. Um, it is the speed. OK, so the speed with which you move is just the derivative of the fractional flow. So at this point, we seem to have the solution nice and simple. The saturation can either be constant or it can be given by this derivative. Now, at this point, we do actually have to sort of think about what these functions look like. OK, so I'm going to just as an example, look at one case, which is I'm going to ignore gravity and I'm going to assume that the fractional flow, therefore, is just the mobility of one phase divided by the sum of the mobilities of the two phases. And I'm also going to assume that the viscosities are similar. I know if it's gas and water, that doesn't seem a terribly good approximation. Um, but, you know, we want to get ourselves going here schematically. So if you recall, a mobility is a relative permeability divided by a viscosity. So let's draw out some typical relative permeability functions. Okay. So I'm not going to do this super carefully, so don't overthink this. This is a relative permeability. This is, say, the saturation of phase one, say that's water. So imagine we've got water that's displacing carbon dioxide in a reservoir. We have an initial saturation. We've got a residual saturation. So this is 1 minus S2 residual. This is the initial saturation of that phase. OK, so we have water initially present. And then the relative permeabilities. Imagine we have a water wet medium. So the water is the wetting phase. We have something that looks like this. So now let's think about what our fractional flow might look like. And again, this is done quickly. You can always plot these up. And of course, it does depend exactly on the case we're looking at. So I don't want to pretend that's the fractional flow. This is zero. This is the initial saturation. This is, say, the residual saturation. So now what does the fractional flow look like? Well, at the initial saturation, the mobility of 1 is 0, so the fractional flow is 0. 
where we've reached the maximum saturation, so water is displacing carbon dioxide and we have residual carbon dioxide in the pore space, right, or residual oil, um, then lambda t, which is lambda 1 plus lambda 2, is lambda 2 is 0, so the fractional flow by definition is 1. And what you then see is the fractional flow function, which is this ratio, starts out slow because the mobility of phase 1 is much lower than that of phase 2. It's around 50% here and then moves towards uh, 1. So it sort of has this sort of S-shaped curve. And of course, that does depend exactly on the viscosities as well and exactly what the relative permeabilities are. But typically, this fractional flow has a shape like this with a point of inflection. The gradient goes up, doesn't reach infinity, that doesn't make any physical sense, and then decreases. Okay, so now let's consider a case where we want to find the solution, and let's now define some boundary conditions, shall we? So we want to find a solution of the saturation as a function, actually, of this dimensionless distance. Okay, and this is just distance over time. And the conditions are here that initially, we can imagine in the reservoir there's some initial saturation, say an initial saturation of water. And this we will label as S1i. We're looking at the alternative, say CO2 injection, this could be zero. But let's, uh, let's do a general case where this is finite saturation. So out here, okay, this is xd over td. Out here, we're at this initial saturation at large xd, or indeed small time and reasonable distance. Our injection conditions, say if we're injecting just water, we will immediately drive the porous medium right by the injection well to the maximum saturation of phase one, which is the residual of the second phase. So this will be trapped CO2, for instance. Okay, if it's, if it's CO2 injection, it actually will be the irreducible water saturation. So this is S, right, S2R, okay, the residual saturation. So it's this saturation here. Okay, so what we want is we want a solution where VD goes from zero to here. So let's see what happens here. We can differentiate um, this curve. So at 1 minus S2R, this residual saturation um, yeah, the gradient here may be zero, it may be close to zero, but we could do a constant state, that's that's okay. Then the gradient increases, reaches a maximum. So we can imagine here the gradient increases, reaches a maximum, then goes back down, and then actually goes to zero here. So just a moment. That's not a solution, is it? Because, whoa, 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 something weird's going on here. Um, for, a given, for a given velocity, right, or a given time, a given distance, is the solution here or here? And we don't seem to be able to get to this initial condition at all. So, um, while the mathematics is correct, something hasn't quite worked. So we thought this was going to be easy, I just find the derivative of this curve, this function, and then I just plot it up and I got the solution and I show, you know, saturation moving through, but it just doesn't look right. So there's something wrong here. Okay, uh, and what's wrong? Well, what's wrong, <laughs> funnily enough, and I sort of hate to say this, but ever since, you know, the time of Newton, where we described the natural world um, in partial differential equations, actually the problem was the partial differential equation in the first place. And physically, what that really means is, although we, we ignored capillary pressure, we ignored a diffusive term. And actually doing that means that we can allow then infinite gradients in saturation. We can have sharp fronts. So in fact, what really happens is we develop what's mathematically called a shock. Now, it's nothing to worry about. We do have shocks in other examples, you know, if um, if an aeroplane goes beyond the, um, moves at more than the speed of sound, we know we get a sonic boom. Essentially, that's a shock wave in pressure, okay? And it's heard as a very loud sound. 
in even more dramatic terms, if uh, an atom bomb explodes, there's a discontinuity essentially in the electromagnetic spectrum and you get a blinding flash. Um, and that actually contains radiation of all frequencies. You get a sharp change in electromagnetic potential. You get the same in multiphase flow, you have a sharp change in saturation. Nothing dramatic happens, it just means that the saturation changes very rapidly with distance. Mathematically, infinitely rapidly, if we assume there's actually no smearing out. In physical terms, actually what's happened is capillary pressure is smearing out the saturation profile, but over a length that's small compared to the distance between wells. OK, so we develop a shock. Mathematically, we develop a shock. What it means physically is just a sharp change in saturation with a bit of smearing due to capillary pressure. But in order to look at these shocks, these discontinuities, I can't actually use a partial differential equation. I can't do um, derivatives because we've got lots of infinities bouncing all over the place. So we need to consider uh, shocks separately, and that's going to be in the subsequent video.